Hi there! I'm right now in my writing process of my first long novel and I have the privilege that crowdfunders gave me the opportunity to have like two months where I really just focus on my story so I was I am working on the story since one year but now for two months I will be a full-time writer so I thought as a thank you to the amazing um, bullet journal communi community and to the amazing writers community I would love to give back something so I would like to show you how I am structuring my work so what you see now is like my project bullet journal and it's a big Leuchtturm which I regularly don't use but I needed something really fast that is lined and that is big so I decided this Leuchtturm and I actually think it's it's okay I get the hype kind of my regular bullet journal will stay forever in this amazing um, semicolon books and there I just have my um, time block and planner for my novel so here I just write down um, what I have to do how many words on what day um, what I have done how many words I have in, in uh, summarized and how um, the ending of the day was if I was like writing more than necessary or less than necessary I haven't worked in the middle of July because of the end of the semester so now I'm starting to use it again and this does need to be pretty at the end it's just for like seeing the process so the rest of the book is inside of this and I wrote down what am I using to organize my work so I wrote it down in perfectly spelled and absolutely fluent English which is the amazing mixture of German and English and we will start here so in the middle there is the idea for the novel and then I start with a in German called Schneeflocken Methode which is um, a method how to structure from the idea to the finished plot a novel so I did this at the beginning and then I start to use the software called Patchwork. I think it's only available in German and it's a writer's software. But there are also programs like Scrivener or even uh, Freeware like iWriter. Uh, the important thing is that you can organize your work there in capitals and in scenes. So this is also possible here. And then I also use as a tool Dragon, which is um, a possibility to write while I'm speaking through a microphone. So this makes writing so much faster and also when you write like dialogues or you're doing a lot of radio work it's also pretty helpful software because it makes it so much easier to have like natural sounding conversations inside of your book or um, write it scripts for your audio podcasts or whatever. So then I have my project budget which I will show you later like in detail and then the next big point is that you should spend at least two or three days thinking about what is like taking you away from your work especially when you have like a weekend now saved for your work or when you know you will have one or two weeks free where you really want to focus on your novel please think before about this topic before it um, destroys your work so there is this amazing freeware called cold turkey and i'm using it it helps to build so I'm sorry I have to take um, away the amazing ankle because it works for recording not so good. It looks amazing but it stops recording so yeah. So um, cold turkey like it blocks every website you don't want to go like Facebook, Twitter, whatever is taking away your energy, Netflix and stuff like this and you can time it. So you can time it for like just 20 minutes or you can time it for... 10 days or something like this and when it's working you really can't unlock it pretty amazing even if there are ways like you're grown up you want to write so go for it and it just helps like um i think it's also impossible to do it without it but then you have to control yourself the whole time like go to twitter no i don't want to go to twitter you want to write and this is already taking you away from your novel so i'm pretty disciplined but still this is making it easier because i just have to think about one time a day like go to twitter and no you took you shouldn't 
then I turn on cold turkey and then it's fine. My brain is really getting away from even thinking about it because I know cold turkey is working. And even if you have the reflex to just tip it in, it won't work. That's pretty cool. Then they show quotes about like, get your shit done. <laughs> then you should look if you can get a room or at least a space in your flat where there are not so many distractions. And um, in my program, there is like a, a class mode, I wouldn't call it in English, where you can um, type also in a time. And then in this time, you can only use the software. Like I use Patchwork, as I told you. I don't know if it's possible in other softwares too. And I use the Pomodoro method. So this is like um, a website where you can just click and then you have 25 minutes and then then comes a sound and then you press break and then you have five minutes for break. Then you have again 25 minutes and then after a few times repeating, you have like a 10 minutes break. And I'm using this also and I also use it as a tool to count how much time I spend. Then I have my routines, which is quite connected to this. So tea is pretty important for me. Every time I get frustrated, I just make a tea. It always helps. At least I have tea then. Then I do sports every day because not of like health stuff or so. It's more about like um, not getting lost in my thoughts and it really helps to like remember there's still a body around you. And also it pushes my creativity. Then food is pretty important. Look what is best for you. Like some people love to eat just healthy then, or people love to eat amazing fast food. Like I'm doing a mixture of both. I just need easy food when I'm writing. I don't have time to cook then. Then look um, what you need to have clean in your flat at least, especially when you're writing like for two weeks or two months or a year or so. Like what is the basis you need to be still okay-ish? and still to be able writing because else you will like think, no, I won't clean anything. I'm a writer and I just want to write. And then you stop writing because you don't feel comfortable anymore. That's not helpful either. And also I have a book with speeches that are pretty helpful for me. Like I put all the books away because I just want to write now. But when I go into my living room, there's this little book waiting for me and it's speeches and short text from Audrey Lord. It's a trust, energy and resistance. And um, she's writing a lot about, or like um, it's a summary of a lot of speeches around why she was writing poems and what this is, why this is so important to tell your story. So this really helps me. Thank you Anushka for that. And also, which is important to have other writers you can stay in contact with. For me, for example, I'm really not social when I'm writing. And so this is something I do online, but it really helps me to see they have also troubles and they have questions and sometimes they hate their work, even if it's the best work in the world. So yeah, try to have that too. And also free time. You want to take your job seriously. So don't be a bad chief for yourself and never give your free time. This is not helpful. Everyone will tell you that. So now let's go into my bujo. As you can see, classical, the index. I have a little key here. And this is already prepared, also pretty helpful. Regularly, I don't have that. But now for my working bujo, I, I really like that. Sorry, I have to take the camera a little bit higher. So these are my daily plans. I will show you next month because it's more structured. So this is August and I'm writing till the 20th, the first version of my book. And the blue circles are scenes, like there's are little parts inside of a chapter. When you have a chapter, you always have little scenes inside of the chapter. And this, everything this together makes a scene. So instead of writing complete chapters, these softwares like Patchwork, iWriter and Scrivener helping you to break them down to scenes and to write pictures for those little scenes. So these are all the scenes I still have to write. Oh my gosh. And I like split them on every day so it doesn't feel too much. It still feels too much. <laughs> and then I have this blue scenes, which is my organization or like backstory, stuff like this. And every blue circle is like 25 minutes, so one Pomodoro. 
So when I did it, I would just fill up the color. Now I also have weekly work. And there are my extra texts. Let me zoom in. As you can see, extra texts. So these are texts. Let me zoom out. Um, like songs and letters or articles that are inside of the book. So they're like not classical scenes and I love to write them directly in this paper because it feels more more real and I can change stuff easy and do it in a coffee. It's totally different than writing a novel for me. So for me it helps to have these two different kinds of, of text. And then I have the next block which is first um, rewriting together with my publisher. And this will start on the 21st. Oh my gosh. So this will at the end look like a complete mess. Like there will be different stuff to do. And yeah, but these little circles help me to have it at least at the beginning really pretty and organized and a good overview. And I have my brain dump. As you can see, my brain dump is really not a pretty page. It's really what a brain dump is about for me. So on the left, I have a list, which is actually like for me readable. <laughs> and on the right, I have just notes like randomly pictures or stuff I have to remember about or dynamics, stuff like this. And every five days or so, I look over this and look what I can make to bullet points or what I think like uh, whatever, or directly write into the pictures of my scenes. And also every five days I look through this and look what I can put in the next months, what can be put into scenes and so on and so on. So this is my log. And my log is about my notes. This is what I'm writing like live while working. And this is my clean log. So here I'm just writing down what happens and make little strikes for my pomodoros. And then I put it here where I really summarize what I did on that day and have my words, my hours, I still have to make this, and how many Pomodoros I, I got. And then I have a lot of maps in my book. Like these are classic mind maps and I have them about every character and dynamics and stuff like this. And also here um, I will write short characters that are like really side characters, but I still want to get to know them. And this is something I want to show you. When you like lose a character or you feel like he's changing and you have to to get to back in contact with him, there are a lot of lists and questions and character ideas um, online. And just write them down here. Like I have this amazing uh, 100 questions interview. And then I really sit down with a coffee and then I have a meeting with this character and we just hang out in my mind and I'm writing down what the character is answering me. It's pretty cool. And also always have a page where you connect the character through the main character. Yeah, so this is that. Then I have a chart like of all characters and places. This is also pretty helpful. And feel free to rewrite it as often as you need it. It's just, even if you never look at it big, it's helpful to have it in your mind structured. And then have like a page of the career of the main character. So a lot of lists. As you can see, yeah, I created something. And then this is pretty important. You should do it at the beginning. I did this and then you should redo it again in the middle of the book, I would say, or like one time you feel it and just write down the most important characters. What is they plot? Try to have it like in time frames, like childhood and then however long or short your novel is. And then also what is their main goal? And the main main goal should be connected to your main character. And this this way you can see like when you split it, you can see where you have like holes in your storytelling of the characters, which can happen when you have different views. Okay, so there we go. This is like something you take from here. Like here you get four goals at the end and then you can connect them to the story goal or the main character's goal. And also for the storyboard, this amazing W method, you can find stuff about it online. And again, I wrote here the finish of my novel. And I will turn this page. And this is important um, because I'm using patchwork for my most 
storyboard stuff because you have the scenes, you have the chapters, you can give it a rating from one to six, how many action is happening inside of it. So you have all this kind of stuff amazingly solved in softwares. But I love to have this method here because it gives you like a bird perspective on everything. You like look from the overview on it and just see if everything fits. And then I have these pages. Till the first draft, I have to write the scenes, I have to write this extra texts. This is reflecting back then to my monthly org page. And I have other stuff to do, which is this org group, this blue circles I showed you at the beginning. And I will add stuff and like this. And at the bottom, we have the deadlines. Yeah. And then I already started for the first rewriting what is to do then, because sometimes you have something in mind, but you shouldn't do it in the first draft because you will get lost. So you should put it here. So it's pretty helpful to have this page set up before. So for example, um, I wrote down, I have a like pretty harsh scene and I don't want to have it completely in my book. So I have to find ways to not telling it, but like telling it under the hand. So I have to do this, but right now I really need to have the scene as harsh and horrible it is inside of the book to reflect on it. And then I will take it out of the book. So this will happen in the first overwork. And yeah, then I have also a pain board, which is pretty amazing. I found it online. So it should be always like person get hurt or has a conflict. Then there should be resistance and then they should turn something beautiful out of it. So this is the dynamic I want to have in my book. It can be totally different for you. Maybe you're a really like negative person and you want to have something beautiful and then they have enough power to do resistance and then they get hurt. This will be a depressing novel. But maybe that's your thing. <laughs> and then you should do it and then you should um, look into your scenes and write them down and look if the dynamic is working like this. It doesn't have to work always like this, but it would be cool if you want this to be the message of your book, it shouldn't be like a totally mess. Or if you want it to be a totally mess because this is your writing style, you should still see if you have done it and not like fell down to one system. So this helps you to look over your scenes. Yeah, and that's pretty it. I mean, the softwares you can get um, like my Patrick, um, they're like amazing, but they have also failures. For example, I have also characters from the African continent and, um, Patrick is quite affordable. It was like 40 bucks before. Now it's about hundred bucks, which is pretty much. Um, and they have a names generator and you can have it like of different regions in the world and countries and even wrestlers and unicorns. But for the whole continent, there's just Africa. So that's pretty annoying. But like every program has this pro and cons. I just want to tell you this. If you're a writer from the African continent, um, I think this is not so helpful for you. I'm already frustrated by it, as you can see. Um, but still, it's pretty helpful to have a software, whatever you choose. And I would really recommend you to break your novel down to chapters, to break it down to um, scenes and then break it down to pitches and or to write a pitch for the scenes, because this will help you when you get lost. And also when you change your story, you can easily find back. And also what I have in my software are the character papers, the character informations, place informations and stuff like this. So I think as longer and co more complex your novel is, as more helpful this kind of software can be. But also you can try a program like this and see if you want to do it completely analog and in your bujo, but it still would be a good inspiration to look into softwares like this. And also look out for software which go with a good um, technical support, because you don't want to lose time while waiting for support. So this is why you use Patrick, because he writes back every day. Yeah. So this is my working video. I hope, hope it gave you some inspiration.